today's video will be discussing glycolysis and uh, there are two types of glycolysis you can have aerobic and an anaerobic this video will be discussing aerobic which requires oxygen and in the following video we'll be discussing anaerobic glycolysis so what is glycolysis it's basically the metabolic process which involves the breakdown of glucose which is a six carbon monosaccharide into pyruvate which is a three carbon monosaccharide and the process occurs in the cytosol a lot of people get confused and they think it occurs in the mitochondria but no it occurs in the cytosol of the cytoplasm and it can be aerobic or anaerobic with oxygen or without oxygen so let's look at the actual reaction itself so we have a glucose molecule which we start off with and what happens is uh, this glucose is converted into glucose 6 phosphate so the difference between this glucose here and glucose 6 phosphate is the addition of a phosphate group basically so the enzyme which catalyzes this reaction which isn't which is uh, non reversible it can only go in one direction is hexokinase this enzyme catalyzes the reaction and the phosphate group comes from ATP so ATP donates one of its phosphate groups so it forms ADP adenosine diphosphate and the reaction is catalyzed by hexokinase so that's where the phosphate group comes from and then you end up with glucose 6-phosphate which is then converted into fructose 6-phosphate and this enzyme is catalyzed by phosphoglucose isomerase and there's no import of any other molecules it's just that this enzyme rearranges glucose 6-phosphate to form fructose 6-phosphate and that's a reversible reaction as well and following on from this we have fructose 6-phosphate which is then via a reaction forms fructose 1,6-bisphosphate and that basically means there's an another phosphate group which has been added onto fructose 6-phosphate so that phosphate groups come from ATP so another ATP is used and the phosphate group is donated on and then ADP is what we are left with and fructose 1,6-bisphosphate so fructose 6-phosphate with another phosphate group on added onto it and that reaction is catalyzed by phosphofructokinase so so far we've used um, two ATP molecules at the moment so just bear that in mind for now and then from fructose 1,6-bisphosphate uh, there are basically two reactions this is also six carbon and then it splits into glyceraldehyde three phosphate and dihydroxyacetone phosphate and these are both basically three carbon um, three carbon monosaccharides with their phosphate group added on you can see phosphate phosphate but only um, only glyceraldehyde three phosphate can continue on to the phase of glycolysis dihydroxyacetone phosphate can only continue with the stages of glycolysis once it's been converted into glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate so just to say again we have uh, fructose 1,6 bisphosphate it's split into glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and dihydroxyacetone phosphate using the enzyme aldolase which does that and then glycerol glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate continues with glycolysis and dihydroxyacetone phosphate is then converted into glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate using the enzyme triose phosphate isomerase so the result is we have two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate now this is the stages up until now are known as the investment phases where we are we have been investing ATPs into these uh, glyco glycolysis reactions up until this point now from here going onwards it's known as the payoff phase and this is where we can get molecules in return so the remember we have two glyceraldehyde 3 phosphates the first one uh, glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate is converted into 1,3 bisphosphoglycerate and the enzyme which catalyzes this reaction is glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase. And usually, when there's an enzyme which is a dehydrogenase, 
um, which is a dehydrogenase enzyme we usually see a NAD plus uh, being used to form an NADH so so far we've gained one NADH and then the 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate which we have is then converted into 3-phosphoglycerate by the enzyme phosphoglycerate kinase and one ADP, one ADP molecule is used to form ATP because remember there's two, phospho, two phosphate groups here so 3-phosphoglycerate only has one phosphate group so one of these phosphate groups has been removed and it's been added onto ADP to form ATP. So, so far we have one NADH and one ATP. And then we have three phosphoglycerate, which is converted into two phosphoglycerate by the enzyme phosphoglycerate mutase. And this is just basically a rearrangement reaction. And then from two phosphoglycerate, in this reaction going forward, uh, the enzyme enolase is used and H2 H2O is released, water is released, to form phosphoenol pyruvate. And then finally, phosphoenol pyruvate is converted into pyruvate by the enzyme pyruvate kinase. And the phosphate group is removed, added onto ADP to form ATP. Now remember, there's two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, so this reaction occurs twice. So even though I've only mentioned it once, we actually get two NADH and then 2 ATP here and 2 ATP here because remember there are two glyceraldehyde 3 phosphates because the fructose 1,6-bisphosphate splits into glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate so that's the first one and then it splits into dihydroxyacetone phosphate which then gets converted into glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate by the enzyme triose phosphate isomerase so now we have two glyceraldehyde 3 phosphates so these stages here, the payoff phases, occur twice I know that's complicated, but watch the video back again if you find it confusing. Uh, and if you have any questions, write them below. So just to summarize, the investment phase, ATP is used. In the payoff phase, a ATP is produced, also NADH as well. And glycolysis requires an expense of two ATP molecules and a total of four ATP and two NADH are produced. And you have a net gain of two ATP and two NADH. Uh, that's everything. If it's been useful, make sure you click like and if you have any questions write them below. Thanks